Hello, uh, we're going to do a video on trigonometry and uh, starting from the very, very beginning. So the first question to ask is, what are uh, the things that we want to find when we do questions in trigonometry? So what are we looking for? What are we looking for? And the answer is uh, one of two things. Either we're looking for an angle inside of a triangle or some shape that can be chopped into a triangle or we're looking for a length of a side of the triangle so we're going to do a few examples but before we do that we need to uh, mention this trick which uh, in most schools they call sol katoa in order to remember the formulas and when you use each one so I remember it just as a word, a sokatoa, and each of these little letters has one uh, uh, meaning. This S here stands for sine, which you should find as a key on your calculator. You should say it like that, just sine. This uh, letter here, O, stands for opposite. There isn't a key in your calculator that says opposite because that refers to the particular triangle that we're looking at. And I'm going to draw one here as an example, just to see what opposite means. Here is a triangle. We always get asked these questions for um, right angle triangles. So I'm going to draw a right angle triangle as an example. And the three sides of a triangle always have uh, a name. The opposite side to the right angle, that's a right angle, the opposite one is always the longest side, right? And this longest side is called the hypotenuse. So this will always, always, always be called the hypotenuse. Opposite to the right angle there. And the other two sides, their names are completely interchangeable. This could be the opposite, or that could be the opposite. Or this could be the adjacent, and this could be the adjacent. And what, uh, what determines that is where the angle that they're asking you, or the angle that they give you, where that is. So if they give you this angle over here, or they ask you for this angle over here, or they give it to you, then the opposite side is going to be this one here, opposite to that angle. As easy as that. So if that's the angle, then this would be the opposite. And the one left is always going to be called the adjacent. Okay, and adjacent means next to. So adjacent has a name next to the angle. Right, so next to the angle, opposite the angle, and the longest side. There, uh, I'm going to draw just a different triangle here with a different angle so that you see what it would look like if we chose the different, uh, the opposite angle. Okay, so if that's your triangle and they actually ask you for this guy here, the only other angle they can ask you for, because this one you know it's directly 90 degrees. So if they ask you for that one over there, this this one is then going to be called the, we stick with the same colors, the opposite is now this one. The hypotenuse is still the same, hypotenuse doesn't care which angle you ask for, it's always opposite to the right angle. And the remaining one is then going to be the adjacent. Okay, so there you see that depending on where the angle you uh, the, the the angle that they give you, that's going to change the adjacent and the opposite around. Now, this O here stands for opposite, and the H obviously is going to stand for hypotenuse. Let me stick with the same color here. This H is going to be hypotenuse, and here you see that the A appears again, and the O appears again, and the A appears here. So Actually, those letters, wherever they appear, they mean the same thing. So here there's an O, and that means opposite. Over here there's an O, that also means opposite, right? Um, so that is opposite hypotenuse. And then we get this one for cos, which is also a bottom in your calculator. This one's now going to be the adjacent. This is... Mm, another button in your calculator which is tan and this uh, you've already seen before these two 
these two here opposite and adjacent are again opposite and adjacent so I'm not going to write them down again so in other words if you write them vertically uh, this is a function on your calculator this is a function and this is a function on your calculator sorry I've missed out a letter actually okay dot otherwise it won't work Okay, so K has an H there. It's a bit silent, but it's there. So that is a button on your calculator. That is a button, and this is a button. Okay? These two here are sides of a triangle. These two here are also sides of a triangle. And these two here are also sides of a triangle. Okay? So the question always comes up, what function are we going to choose? You can choose this button in your calculator, this one or that one to find out the information that they ask you for. That choice is given completely by what they give you. So let me give you an example. If this is my triangle, it doesn't always have to face in the same direction at all. I can face in any direction whatsoever. So if this is my triangle, okay, it's also a right angle triangle. Here's my right angle, and they give me, let's first uh, do the sides, because they are a little bit easier, and the angle we'll do later. So if they give me this angle here, and they tell me that it is 20 degrees, and they give me this side here, and they tell me that this is 5 meters, then they can ask me for two things, and we're going to do them both. They can ask me for this side, or they can ask me for that one. Depending on which side they ask me, I'm going to use one function or the other. So let's uh, let's have a look at this. First, let's do it with this one. Okay. So imagine they're going to ask us for uh, this guy here. So our choice uh, is going to be then given by whatever letters they give us so we need to whatever sides of the triangle they give us so let's explore what they give us or what is involved in the question and then we can choose here this guy is involved why because he's, they're asking for it so it's involved in the question definitely what other side is involved this one now your task is to look at those two things uh, that are involved and to find out what side of the triangle they are once you know that, you can then choose which function to use. So, this guy is opposite the angle on the other side. So that one is easy. This one is, is just called the opposite. This guy here is not the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is always opposite to the right angle, and it's also the longest. So this guy here is always going to be the hypotenuse. So the only remaining one is the adjacent, and it makes sense because adjacent means next to, and here's the angle and this one is next to it so if this one is the opposite and this one is the adjacent look at the first letter of each one opposite adjacent now we go to our trick here and we look at the second two letters of every trio this is a trio that's a trio that's a trio let's look at the second two letters of each one this has opposite and hypotenuse not useful because here's my hypotenuse and it's not involved in the question they don't ask me for it and they don't give it to me so I don't, I don't care about the sign. I'm not going to use sign for this question. What about this one? Adjacent hypotenuse. Again, this guy I don't care about. The last one, opposite adjacent. Opposite adjacent. So that's uh, the right one to use. So what's this guy here? Well, T is for tan. So that is my uh, function that I'm going to choose. Is this guy over here. And in your calculator, you'll find that button. And what the equation looks like normally is this tan of the angle. In this case, they give it to you. Sometimes the angle is what you're looking for. We'll do that later. But here they give it to you. Tan of the angle they give you equals, and this is always going to be like that, the first letter divided by the second letter. In other words, the length of the first side divided by the length of the second side. So, what's the opposite length? X. We don't know the number, so we've got to put the, the letter that they give us here. Sometimes they give you X, other times they give you L, whatever letter they call this. 
you put that one in divided by the adjacent adjacent is five meters so you can just put here a five and then we're nearly close to solving it because uh, I'm running out of paper there let me see yeah running out of paper uh, we're close to solving it now here's when a, a little bit of algebra comes into into play and the trick is always going to be simple when you're looking for the letter on top then it's going to be a very simple matter when you're looking for the letter on the bottom you're going to have to do two operations in algebra but here you're looking for the one on top so in algebra what are always uh, the steps to take well my first question to myself is what am i trying to find and the answer in all of this jumble is this guy trying to find x so what do i want to move well i want to leave this guy alone and it's already on the top so i don't want to move him i want to move this guy the 5 to get him on the other side and therefore uh, leave the x alone and find out the answer so question is always what is it doing the guy's dividing so if he's dividing i've got to do the opposite to both sides so i'm going to do to this side i'm going to multiply by 5 which is the opposite of dividing and on this side i'm also going to multiply by 5 you're going to need to do the same thing to both sides what happens here if i divide by 5 well the 5 at the bottom just disappears is already being divided by it so it disappears and on the left if i multiply by five well it's going to look like this five times tan 20. okay it doesn't really need the brackets if you put the 20 like that then that's fine so you can put it here or you can put behind it some people say tan 20 times five it doesn't matter i prefer to put it in front because then you're sure that the five is uh, multiplying the whole of the tan 20 and you don't uh, confuse it some people get confused multiplying 20 by 5 and then take tan of the answer and that can give you the wrong thing in fact it definitely will give you the wrong thing so it's better to multiply the 5 times the answer of tan 20 this total answer okay so ne nearly finished there we go to our calculator and we figure out what uh, we get okay so uh, my assistant here has just done the calculation and we have found out that x which is the length of this guy opposite here is 1.82 if i do the rounding on the on the second decimal this is why 1.819 and this is in meters so we have just discovered that if you uh, ever have a plank and you put a plank like this on top of a wood plank for example on top of the floor and the distance of the floor is five meters you put a big wooden uh, plank like this then if you make sure that this angle is 20 degrees, then the height of the wall on which you put your plank will always have to be 1.82 meters. That's what we just found out. Okay, this kind of uh, construction and uh, problem was very useful for people who were building uh, just any kind of building a long time ago. So that's why they came up with a trigonometry because it was useful. We just uh, did a problem where we had to find the side and where we had to find the tan. I'm now going to give you the same problem, but instead of asking you for x, I'm going to ask you for y. And we're going to assume that you don't know this guy. We don't know this one yet, you just know the 5 and the y. Okay, so for that I'm going to move to a new place over here. We need some more paper. Okay. So this one I'm going to do a little bit quicker because you already saw the last one and this is a very similar idea. So here is your plank and now the question is what is the size of this guy this is still 20 degrees this one is still five meters and now they're asking you for y so what's the the key here well you write down the same so ka with an h to ah. and you look at these and you try to decide what do they give me and what should i be using well they give me the angle obviously and then they give me the opposite no they don't give me the opposite we don't know what that is so the opposite ones are not going to be selected i'm not going to need sine because this one has the opposite and i'm not going to use tan because this one also has the opposite i'm going to probably have to use this guy cos which is for adjacent my hypotenuse let me just check five meters yes we said that that was the adjacent because it's next to the angle and the hypotenuse is always the long guy so yeah here we're going to use cos because the adjacent and the hypotenuse are what are what is involved so cos 20 of the angle 
you always write the cos of the function that you decided you're going to use then the angle equals um, adjacent the first guy so a what is a five meters so you you can put it first in letters if you want adjacent over hypotenuse and in numbers in real numbers what that means is that what we have actually i'm going to write it here underneath i always prefer to do things underneath in algebra cos 20 equals adjacent is 5 and hypotenuse we don't know so we're looking for this guy now the one at the bottom okay and that in algebra is a little bit more tricky because we got to do two steps so what are the two steps here if we want to find the letter on the bottom well the first thing is to realize that when you have a fraction you cannot move the number on the top you can never 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 move the number on the top when you have a fraction you always have to move the number on the bottom first so the idea is to bring this guy up here first and once you've done that with this you can then move the whole cos 20 and put it on the other side and then you'll have an answer so let's do it in two steps first thing what is the thing that I want to move around this guy what is it doing dividing how do I move it opposite thing to both sides so I multiply by h both sides actually I've called it here h I should have really called it y which is what they give me in the question so I'm gonna be I'm not gonna be naughty and I'm gonna do it properly I've got to use the same letter that they give me in the question even though we know it's the hypotenuse it's okay to write it here when you're translating the formula but it's not okay when you're then gonna start calculating things so let me call this by its name y we want to move the y what is it doing dividing what do we do to both sides the opposite we multiply the left side by y then it's easy we just get y times whatever's on the left side which is cos 20. we multiply this by y now the y cancels with the other y and the y disappears the same as before when uh, the same that thing that happened before to the bottom so um, 5 over y times y is 5. so now we nearly finished but we need a second step because look what we have now we have the thing we're looking for times something equals five and i actually want this the y i want it on its own completely on its own so then i can calculate it right i don't have it on its own yet so my questions in algebra come to the rescue what was my first question always well what am i looking for this guy what is annoying me what is in the way this guy is in the way i don't like him i want him on the other side so what is he doing to the y he is multiplying multiplying the whole thing is multiplying all of that cos 20 that's like one single object don't think about the cos on its own and 20 on its own okay in an equation it wouldn't make any sense to write cos okay that's a button in your calculator but you always apply it to an angle always so uh, don't think of cos as one object and 20 as another okay cos 20 is one whole object the same as x squared is one object okay it doesn't make any sense to have squared and not to have anything here underneath right you need something squared so here the same cos and 20. so this whole object is multiplying the y we're gonna do the opposite to both sides because we want to move the whole object what's the opposite of multiplying dividing we divide by cos 20 this side what happens if I have y times 5 and I divide by 5? Well, if I have 5 times y divided by 5, the 5's cancel and I just get y. So here the same. I have y multiplied by some object, and if I divide by that object, that object disappears and I'm left only with the y. If I divide the right by cos 20, easy, I just put it on the bottom of the fraction. 5, whatever was there before, divided by cos 20. Now we can do it on the calculator. We just got to do 5 divided by cos 20 and we'll get the right uh, answer for y, which is going to be, I nearly forgotten what we're doing, always look back at the diagram, the longest side of the triangle. So if that's the longest side, if I've done everything correctly, the answer should be bigger than 5. And that's always to, a good thing to realize before you calculate it to see if you've made any mistakes. So let's check that this is bigger than 5. Uh, for that, we're going to do it great so we just uh, worked out the answer which comes out to be on the calculator 5.32 meters approximately and as you can see this is bigger than 5 and then we know that we've done the right thing because this guy here is 5 and it's impossible for the diagonal 
to be uh, shorter than the straight side right if I have a box then this side here is never going to be as long as the diagonal somebody tells you to walk across the diagonal of a pitch or run it of a football pitch you're going to say well that's a lot longer than this side so they're not the uh, uh, yeah, so you make sure that way that you're not making a mistake. Always check that your answer makes sense with the, the diagram that you have and the geometry. Okay, so in the next video we'll have a look at some more complicated uh, or different variations of this problem where you can then be asked to find the angle. Alright, so see you in the next video.